Hey everybody, uh, haven't been around for a while. I uh, taken a little break from YouTube, but uh, overall, I just want to give a quick update just to show you guys what's growing on here. So uh, last year, I found this wild purple flowering thimbleberry, and it was just like three sticks in the ground, and now this cane goes all the way down it's about oh three feet from the ground got some lovage and some new things i'm trialing out this year now we're in zone 4b ontario which is less than ideal for a lot of different fruit trees but fortunately i don't know i had some papa seed that I got from uh, somebody through a Facebook plant group and um, I'm starting them under here. I'm in the shadiest spot of my yard. There's some protection from wind and it's kind of like a little microclimate. And in the winter, uh, I lean up the trampoline and I take it apart and it goes up here. So that also has some added protection as well. And uh, I tried to stick in a bunch of different things. I'm trialing them out. I've tried to eat hostas this year, which I've put all around here as the front ground cover. And there's some kales and lettuces I've sewn in. And uh, I'm hoping that this will work out. I transplanted the hydrangeas back here as well. And then I got some new vegetables I want to try out. This is uh, Hablitzia. And um, I planted, started some from seeds, stratified it for a couple weeks in the fridge. Uh, let it grow inside a little bit and then transplanted them out while they were small and so far They're just little I mean, it's the start of the season, but I'm hoping that they ramp up a bit as well as the lovages I plugged them in in different areas So I wanted to show you guys this cool plant right here This little yam the Chinese yam or Shan Yao or Dioscoria polystachia or patatas it's got a lot of different names. I first seen this plant on Edible Acres um, site and they were selling it. And then I recently found out how invasive it is and how hard to find it is. And it took me a while, but I finally got some. I bought three of them and I'm trialing them in different areas. So over here we get the afternoon sun and then it peters off once it goes over to the house and it heads west. I get a lot of shade here. So we get midday sun for a couple hours. And apparently they like a part shade moist conditions. And this seems to be a very moist uh, ground covered area. Especially by the thimbleberry. I did not expect how big it was getting. And I also had this half high blackberry back here. Uh, the Chester. And I noticed that all the limbs that were lying on the ground over winter had died but this year I'm going to try standing it up and uh, if I can trellis it up here and it lasts over winter and, and the growth comes back on the canes then I might just leave it in this spot if not I'll move it to a sunnier location but uh, I made these new beds uh, this one I dug into and I took out the sod where this one over here, I just laid mulch down. So I'm just gonna trial it out. Um, I might put a step over, but I really want this to, this is all pretty much annuals with some, a few perennials tucked in. But um, I really wanna make this a pollinator bed, kind of the central area to the garden. I wanna put just a bunch of different uh, wild flowers, native flowers, pollinating flowers. So this year I did, uh, the sorrel is bolting. So I got two kinds of sorrel now. This one's going to be a trial. Arumex singuisium. I actually don't like the flavor as much as I do like this one. It has absolutely no flavor, I find. I also grew some Turkish Rocket or Bunius Orientalis from seed and it suffered a lot of slug damage but I'm hoping that it comes up 
And then the two catnip starts that were about maybe a foot high last year are now literally two feet and they're not even flowering yet. So once they flower, they're gonna pop out even more. So in the back, um, what I wanted to do initially was plant, I planted a ton of seed. I bought a few packets of seed uh, from Salt Spring Seeds of um, some Minnesota Rata and I managed to get one. So <laughs> I'm gonna let that grow. Um, I'm gonna take seed from that and I'm gonna expand it around this area. You need really fresh seed and I sowed it in the fall, but I did give this a pretty heavy mulch, uh, not thinking. And back here along this trellis, this is the Isai Kiwi, which actually suffered a lot of damage. I got this as a bare root and it was very, it was struggling the whole entire summer. But now I think uh, it's got a little bit of legs on it and the root system's gotten a little bit stronger and tucked in behind it underground, which has not popped up yet. So if you guys have any experience with growing groundnut, let me know when it comes up because I've checked the ground nuts though, like they have sprouts, but they're just not popping out of the ground yet. Um, so, gooseberry's doing good. I got fruit on it this year, and I kind of just interplanted everything. I dug out this part of the bed, and I planted some watermelon, which is taking a beating because we've had some cold nights. Some some butternut squash that I got from the Eastern Squash Breeding Program. And then along here, I just put in some moonflowers and nasturtiums. And I'm hoping this fills in the space with this hybrid corn here. I might have to hand pollinate this year. And I'm perfectly fine with that as long as I get a, a little bit of sweet corn. But uh seems like the three different kinds of mints that I put in here, the only ones that really have come back are this wild mint that I found and the mojito mint which seemed to overwinter and spread around so the wild mint's a little more vigorous I'm hoping that it takes over the bed uh, has caps put on about two feet of growth and they set fruit this year so I'm gonna wait for that to ripen I'm guessing uh, by end of June, should be ready to go. Um, apparently, once they turn blue, you still have to wait a good week before you can harvest the fruit. So I'm gonna net them and uh, see how that goes. Anyway, sun chokes came back even harder even though I harvested a ton of them. And uh, I'm happy about that because this year, last year I probably got about two 10 gallon buckets off of what initially started as one plant a year before. So definitely a choice uh, food for the hunger gap and just overall just very highly productive. And I always try to tuck in medicinals as well, which I think this is incredibly beautiful St. John's wort flower. I'm also starting some um, marshmallows and just a number number of other things, whorehound. I just want to get them uh, started. I also put in some bronze fennel. My bronze fennel did not come back. Definitely a zone five plant, but I'm willing to try it again this year. Um, right here, Marina de Chioga squash. Definitely a great squash, super vigorous. Um, I'm hoping it takes this year. What I do is I, start my seed on paper towel until I start to see them sprout. I transplanted them out way earlier than I should have, or I didn't transplant them, but I put them out, the seeds in the ground, and I put these cloches on top. And we have a pretty short season, so things like watermelon, you really gotta pick uh, like an icebox variety that's very short season. But I also got spaghetti squash as well. And what I do is I plant a ton of them, and then I take out the existing ones, like the strongest one I keep. And then the rest of them I kind of just pull out and lie on the ground. I also got a zucchini forming back here. But, yeah, it's just pretty random. The lupins flowered this year. And some grape cuttings that I took seem to be doing 
pretty damn well. That was the tiniest little twig that I buried underneath there last year. And this was the Fredonia over there that I just transplanted. But uh, chives are flowering. I'm gonna let them flower. I noticed uh, this year I had some problems with uh, bibinoid flies, which uh, I had this larva all in here, and it's because all the corn stalks that I failed to grow last year, I just chopped them out and I laid them down, and there's still some corn, and they eat grain, so they kind of just went crazy underneath the soil and overwintered, and then they came up, and I started to see some flies uh, going around on certain things, but I'm not so worried about it now. They kind of left, the dragonflies came out, and the robins have been eating them. My Egyptian walking onions, finally, after second year, are starting to put on their second stock, and they'll make baubles for me this year. I put in another service berry, because the one I put in last year didn't make it, so this one right here is smoky and it seems to be pretty vigorous. I mean, that was just an inch tall, and now it's it's doing pretty good. It's getting happy. But underneath all this is some radish. Uh, there's some craws nests in here. I planted tomatoes at the back that weren't initially doing well, but I'm hoping it all kind of takes place. Opuncha cactus. Um, not really a zone five plant, but I'm gonna try it again. And Salad Burnett, only one that made it. I'm going to be taking seed from that. And I want to kind of make it as an edge uh, or in small patches around the garden. So this year, that's the focus is really just filling in these spaces. I don't know if anybody's had any trouble with growing hardy bush cherries, but man, they are slow to grow. This is the third year and I'm not seeing much growth on them. So this year I'm going to take extra time to really uh, compost tea them and give them everything they need and hopefully they'll really start to push out. The elderberry in the back is really making a difference and kind of everything on the edge here is popping. These were probably a bad idea to put in here but um, you know, I'm just going to let that be. I'm going to cut them back. I'll take the actual flowers off because they dry up even when they're not fresh and they still make seed and then I'm gonna just throw the seed around different areas of you know the park or the trails I'm just to see more daisies uh, I do see different kinds of flies landing on them and tiny tiny bees like this one right here I don't know if you can focus in on that but very small little tiny bees oregano spreading yarrow definitely spreads and then the strawberries along the back are making a pretty decent amount of fruit but uh i want to show you something that is working out for me i just took some potatoes that i chitted and um i didn't think they were going to come up so i just interplanted some zucchini in between and they seem to be coming up but all this is just manure and this lawn under here is obviously just sand, but the potatoes are coming up. And when they come out, I might put in some garlic this winter and mulch it over with some straw. But then in a couple years, I'll be putting some baby seed buckthorns that I'm growing from seed in there. I also threw in some persimmon seeds in here. I want to trial those out here. They're all underneath the soil. They have not come up yet. Oh, look at Krosnes. I planted them randomly everywhere. And uh, good King Henry is making seed. So I'll be spreading that around in other areas. But I really, uh, there's the sea buckthorn babies. I really just want to incorporate more of that around the yard. So if we check back here, um, probably can't see it. But there it is. Another yam berry and uh it's kind of in the shade of this lupin um it's gonna climb up that pole but i'm hoping that one does well 
but we're gonna see what happens. I got another one in a more shady spot <laughs> right beside the compost, so and see what it really wants more like nutrition, shade, you know, more sunlight. I don't know what makes it more vigorous. It's kind of a good way to test things out. Anyways, guys, that's the update. Um, yeah, check in with me later. Hopefully, I'm able to make some more videos. I've been kind of busy, and uh, COVID going on doesn't help any situation for anyone. I know there's a lot of people at home right now, and you know, so stay safe, and uh, I'll uh, put up another video sometime later. See you guys.